Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kyle with Simulation Lab uh, doing another tutorial uh, with 3D Studio Max and Tyflow. And uh, today we're going to be looking at some cool stuff that you can do with cloth, um, with the uh, cloth solver that's uh, uh, part of the Tyflow uh, tool pack. Um, so you can do all kinds of really cool stuff with this. And I made a little example video of just some testing that I was doing. Um, so we'll uh, check this out. So you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. Um, you know, if you want to make like a, some cloths flying around or <clears throat> you want to simulate clothing or I don't know, I was going for some kind of like car wash effect where there's a bunch of like uh, cloth ribbons that were like hanging down and you can like fly and push objects into it or something. Uh, so um, the cloth is like fully dynamic and able to uh, uh, precisely uh, simulate against like moving objects. Um, so there's a bunch of different ways you can do this sort of effect, um, but we're gonna focus on like the most simplified versions of this. So I think we're gonna cover it will do something that's more of like a ribbon that's falling and kind of acts a little bit more like paper maybe. And then, uh, and then maybe we'll like focus on something a little bit more complex like this, where you can spawn a bunch of planes and then turn them all into cloth and have like a sphere or something interact with them, just like this video. So, uh, so yeah, let's jump into Max. So first things first, like usual, um, set up our units. I'm gonna use centimeters for this one. So that's good. Um, and then I'll start with like modeling a plane. And maybe I'll do something like mm, 600 by 50, something like that. And we'll zero that out. And then for the length segments, we'll do something like 100. And for the width, we'll do something like um, 6. I don't know. And we'll raise that up a little bit. And then this one, we're just going to do maybe like this ribbon that falls on the ground. So I'll set up a little ground plane. Something like this. Zero that out. Maybe make that a little bit bigger. 700 by 700, and the height is a negative value just so the ground plane is, we can still see our grid. It doesn't really matter. You could do it however you want. And then for this, I'll oh, keep it keep it visible. And then, um, yeah. So maybe we'll make this cloth like a different color, even though this, this really doesn't matter. Um, Turn on edge faces so we can see our faces. So that's all looking good. So this is going to be a pretty quick one. Um, so set up our tie flow object. Bring that in. Stretch this out a little bit so you can see all the operators and stuff that we have at our disposal. Um, okay, so now first things we're going to do is we'll go ahead and birth the plane. So we'll pick our plane. Display geometry again, that doesn't really matter because we're gonna bind it to a cloth object. Um, do a toss on a cloth bind, and at this point, we can disable our geometry, we don't need to really need to see that. Um, and then I'm going to turn off plane one because we don't need to see that anymore. So now we just have our tie flow um, plane, uh, or I have our tie flow object referencing the plane, we can see it via our cloth bind operator. So now from here, we're gonna do a, oops, uh, we're gonna do a particle bind. And I'll set the, lead, the stiffness at 0.75. We can play with that later. Uh, we're gonna turn off proximity bind. And we're gonna turn on bind to siblings and proximity one is fine for right now. Um, and then we'll do a particle physics. And collision, we will set that to a little bit higher, like five or something. And that should be good for right now. We'll kind of see how it plays out. And then we'll toss on a 
force operator negative 0.25 or something just kind of lower gravity so it seems a little slower um, and of course we have to add in our collision operator and pick a ground plane now if we send this out there's gonna be a bunch of weird issues right so I'm sure if you've ever tried to do cloth before it does this weird thing where it like uh, the physics particle physics operator doesn't seem to be working so you like increase the hell out of that and there's just like a bunch of strange issues happening so what you have to do um, generally speaking is we want to set our time step to something like quarter frame for cloth for cloth um, it needs quite a bit of um, uh, time to process and our steps let's do something like a hundred for now and so generally that should give us like a pretty interesting effect it's gonna take a while to process but once it does it'll be nice and should be nice and smooth so that's looking kind of interesting what we'll probably end up doing is um, bring our tie flow object right here is in our cloth bind we'll go ahead and add a shell to the surface so we could have a little bit of a shell to it point two something like that and our bend will change to point five and I'll go ahead and sim this out and that's looking pretty cool um, so far it's got some pretty good overlap you could tell it, or well you could tell it's still penetrating through each other uh, through itself so we're gonna have to increase the steps a little bit more and that'll clear some of that up so I'll go ahead and do that now okay so I increased the solver steps to 150 and that seemed to be the sweet spot for this particular little cloth here so if we increase of course if we increase the um, count of our uh, faces um, that'll um, make the uh, cloth much a little bit more dynamic if you're going for actual like more, more of a fabric um, but in this case I kind of like how it has like a paper quality to it uh, so we'll watch that so it's great that it sims in real time once it's cached um, so that that's pretty cool um, we could do all kinds of stuff with this we can decrease the uh, gravity and stuff um, but for this I like I like how this is looking so this is our, our first little example and then we'll move on to uh, to doing something a little bit a little bit differently a little bit more complex okay cool so I'll bring back our tie flow object here and I'll go ahead and disable this and uh, in our layers um, I'll pop that plane back on I'll just make a clone of it as a copy and we'll turn the number one off and then we'll just deal with our plane number two for right now and so I think maybe I want to make a little bit shorter a little bit skinnier and I did uh, 80 for length four for width the segments and then I just uh, kind of arbitrarily chose um, 455 by 26 centimeters uh, and we'll drag it down a little bit more a little bit closer to the ground and for this one we're gonna birth a few of them uh, on, onto a like a plane um, so we'll have the plane control the amount of uh, cloth strips we have sort of like in this video uh, we're gonna just spawn a bunch of cloth strips over a surface so for this one, maybe we'll do like a, let's figure that out, maybe we'll like four, maybe we'll do 12, I don't know. And turn on edge faces. And uh, this will be our um, reference cloth object here, or a reference plane. So I'm gonna effect pivot in the uh, hierarchy tab, effect pivot. And then I'm just going to drag that up and uh, turn on my snaps. Make sure that's set to endpoint. And I'm going to grab that and stick that right at that edge there. Actually, I guess we could let's we'll stick that right in the middle. Cool. Turn off effect pivot only. Turn off my snaps. Cool. Uh, so now we'll create another 
Typhlo object. And I'll drag this over. And so what we'll do is we're going to birth at frame 0. And we'll do, I think, 12 for right now. And we'll display it as geometry. I think I think we might have to do 11. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, do a shape. Uh, I'm remove that. S add selected. And then I'm going to do position object. Pick our plane. I'm going to choose vertices in order. And then we'll do uh, rotation. And inherit previous. And then in the X we'll do um, 90. And then in the Z we'll do 90 as well. Uh, yeah, 12. 12 is good. Okay, just wanted to check and make sure we don't have any overlapping planes. Um, so now that we have that, maybe I'll like decrease the size of this a little bit. Get them a little closer together. Uh, that's good. Do 15, because I forgot about uh, three more vertices that I had. Um, okay, cool. So that that's good. We can go ahead and in our object properties for that plane, turn a renderable off, and maybe just display that as a box. We don't really care about that. That's just our uh, position that we're going to be birthing the particles from. Um, and then so from here, we can grab our layer manager, and I'm just going to hide plane two. We don't need to see that anymore. And get rid of my layers. Um, cool. So from here, I'm going to create another box over the top of everything. I'm going to center that up. And I'll drag this up until it's about the height of the plane that all the the uh, cloths were birthed from, so you know, object properties, and that's not going to be renderable, and I'm going to display that as a box as well. Um, so that is going to be called our like sticky box. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so it, our sticky box is going to be what's um, uh, the tops, just the tops of the cloth strips are bound to. So that those don't move. Those are going to like make the cloth stick to that box. So they're going to be able to f fly around freely. Um, so from here, we'll do we'll toss in our cloth bind and stuff like that. So do that next. Turn off geometry. We don't need that anymore. And we'll leave these settings the way they are for now. We'll add a shell to the surface, uh, just so we can see it. Just like point two for inner and outer. Um, okay, cool. So now we have that. We'll do our um, particle bind. And just the same thing as we did with the previous example. Maybe for this, I'll, leave the, I'll set the stiffness. I'll set the stiffness to be 1 for this. Um, and these are all just settings that you can play with. I'm going to turn off proximity bind. And then I'm going to do bind to siblings. Because we're just going to do be dealing with just cloth strips. So we don't want um, the, the particles that are uh, interacting between the strips to stick together once they collide. So we don't want that to happen. I'm going to toss in our particle physics. And I might try to stick with that like 5 multiplier radius uh, for the scale radius of this. I'm not really sure how that's going to look. Um, but we'll, we'll just kind of play around with it. Um, and uh, yeah. Okay, so cool. So from here we'll do a surface test because we gotta figure out what to do with our sticky plane up there, right? Because uh, if we do, if we toss in a force operator, uh, and we'll set it to like 0.25, negative 0.25. Um, if we do that, uh, the, all the cost strips are just gonna fall, and nothing's going to happen because we don't have collision setup or anything. Um, 
So we gotta do a surface test. And this is real simple. Uh, we already have our box selected, so if you select a box, we add that. And then if it's greater than like one centimeter, um, then something else has to happen, right? So we're going to um, it, we're going to disable. So we do a particle switch. We're going to disable those particles that are within proximity of that box, within a one centimeter proximity to the box. And you can see the particles have already highlighted because we're going to display as box. And if we like do geometry or something, you could see the little X's. Um, so those particles are disabled from the simulation. So they're going to be stuck to the, the actually, well, they're technically going to be stuck to the box. But the way we stick them to the box is by doing an object bind. And then we'll, since we have our box selected already, we're going to add selected, sticky box, right? And then we'll do lock to surface, snap to surface. And then now, if you run your test sim, it's the same thing as the last one, like just weird artifacts and stuff start happening so the cloth gets like super mega stretched out. So uh, we're going to grab our, that tie flow object, set our server steps to be like, again, something like 100. Um, and under our main settings, we'll set it to like quarter frame. And we'll just see how that kind of works. I, I've, I've had a lot of luck with uh, those those settings. Cool. So now they're not really doing anything, which is good. That's what we want. Um, now we're going to set up something to collide with them. So we'll do a sphere. Um, just like I did in this uh, example, maybe we'll just use a sphere. So we'll toss in a sphere here, like so. And we'll uh, zero out the Y axis there. We'll Bring that a little closer. And then so from maybe like 0 to 60. It's a good rule of thumb to just disable your sim before you add keyframes to stuff. Um, anyway, I'm going to grab my sphere. I'm going to push it over here. So I'm animating from 0 to 60. It's going to pass through. And we can drag that up a little bit. It's going to pass through our little field of strip cloth strips. And then bring our tie flow object back. And then a collision. Add a collision operator there. And then since we have our sphere selected, add selected. And then shape radius, I think I'm going to do something like uh, just set it to like one. I'm not really sure how that's going to play out, but we'll, we'll see. And yeah. So now if we run this, it's starting to look pretty good. Um, you want to get those solver steps as low as you possibly can without seeing any weird like issues um, just to get the simulation to be a little bit more smooth um, and so it doesn't take forever to sim out but this is looking pretty cool so far um, this is basically the same uh, concept that we have here and it's pretty clean So I'm liking how that's looking. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, I wanted to cover a couple quick cool things that you can do with uh, TyFlow's uh, cloth solver and uh, using particle bind and particle physics. Um, pretty simple setup, um, but uh, for any of you seasoned TyFlow uh, users or anyone that's new to using TyFlow, um, it can be pretty challenging to figure out how to make cloth work correctly. Um, so the, the real trick is um, using the uh, time steps and the uh, appropriate um, simulation sub steps for the uh, solver settings and the particle particle bind solver to, uh, to get that to work right. Um, so anyway, if you like the tutorial, please smash the like button and subscribe for more. Got a bunch more coming up, a bunch more tutorials coming up. And um, yeah, let me know what you thought of the video. If you, if you liked it, um, if you have suggestions for future tutorials or for things that you would do differently, uh, let me know in the comment section below. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching, and uh, stay tuned, and we'll see you soon. Thanks.